friends welcome to my workplace at ranaghat west bengal india this is a hard brown cataract a lot of things happened in this case let us see the salient steps of this surgery after the initial steps capsular excis is being done at this moment with the help of a uh, utrita forceps Whenever you use uterine forceps, keep the anterior leaf of the main wound lifted up. Then leakage of viscoelastic substance will be very minimal. Now hydro dissection. Do hydro dissection at multiple points with small amount of fluid. mobilize the nucleus and then inject visco and then introduce the tip of the feco handpiece the machine being used in this case is utley catrix 3 from switzerland and the chopper is just a modified senske hook just a bit stouter and flat on either side now the hand piece is turned so that the bevel is up push the nucleus little down bury the tip go through the substance of the nucleus towards the opposite equator i call this submarine job yes the nucleus has been divided in nicely into two halves the other side is still attached rotate on 80 degree and separate the nucleus completely and now this hemineucleus is divided in the same way it has been divided into two large pieces and now the other hemineucleus is divided into two large fragments so the nucleus the hard nucleus has been divided into four large fragments each fragment is emulsified in this case i didn't tilt the triangular piece and just started emulsifying this may be the cause of posterior capsular rent which occurred in this case feco power being used in this case is 85% flow rate is 45 ml per minute vacuum is 450 mm of mercury all the pieces are rotating nicely and i hope pisirent has not yet occurred yes at this moment there is no pisirent i tilt this apply little energy here and thus i separate the two pieces completely at this moment probably there is a posterior capsular rent so maybe when i try to separate the two pieces of the semi nucleus applied energy at the point where the two pieces were joining piece rent probably occurred at that time but i am not sure and 
there is no drop of any nuclear fragment no drop of epinuclear lens matter but we can see there is a big piece end just from the center towards 7 o'clock at this time the first thing that should be done is anterior vitrectomy because if we try to aspirate the cortical matter we will be pulling the vitreous strands the vitreous will get hydrated very soon and we will pull the vitreous strands that will increase the risk of retinal break formation at the peripheral parts of the retina so the first thing that you should do is antivitectomy in this case I have used intermittent irrigation to reduce hydration of anterior vitreous initially and now I am using the irrigation almost continuously and I find that the vitreous has not been hydrated it has not prolapsed into the anterior chamber even then I am using intermittent irrigation so this is a good way to prevent hydration of anterior vitreous if the vitreous gets hydrated it cannot go behind it has to come into the anterior chamber and now after adequate vitrectomy removal of cortical matter is very easy we can do it with either a simco cannula this is a 23 gauze simco cannula we can also use bimanual irrigation aspiration for cortical cleanup yes here also we can go at 7 o'clock where this and I was coming very slowly to check if I am pulling any vitreous strand or not no there is no vitreous strand and cortical cleanup has been very satisfactory till now still some cortex is there yes this is the last bit of cortex and now I apply some visco this is 2% hydroxypropyl methyl cellulose not a lot of it some amount of visco I enlarge the main own because I will be using a B cartridge and I want the cartridge to go into the anterior chamber and then I can place the haptic over the anterior capsular rim here it is it is going over the anterior capsular rim and behind the iris that means it is going into the sulcus and now I'm going to inject some more visco over the anterior surface of the lens and then I'm going to use a macpherson's here it is this is a macpherson's forceps I am trying to place this haptic in the sulcus but it didn't go into the sulcus it is over the iris so what I do is I take a Senske hook go through the right side port at the haptic optic junction I engage it and rotate it and it goes into the sulcus since the rexis was large about 6 millimeter I cannot do optic capture and now I am going to use the cutter and irrigation 
for removal of visco because I do not know if at any moment any vitreous strand will come or not. At this moment I am behind the eye wheel, I have gone into the anti-vitreous and I am using the cutter to remove the anterior um, to remove the viscoelastic substance from the anterior vitreous and using irrigation intermittently again. I don't have post op pictures of this patient, but the patient did very well. There was no corneal edema and the patient is very happy. There's no fluters also. That means there is no drop of cortical or epinuclear lens matter. And now, to be 100% sure, I will be using tramsinol acetate and before that this is pilocarpine. I am using pilocarpine and I am waiting for some time so that the people constricts because if the people is dilated, if I inject tramsinolone acetate, a lot of tramsinolone acetate will go into the antivitreous. So just little bit of tramsinolone is injected. And now I use Simco to check if there is any vitreous strand in the anterior chamber. And it is not. There is no vitreous strands in the anterior chamber. Yes. Now this is I want to check if I need any suture or not in the anterior and to close the main wound and I checked that it is not necessary. And now this is moxifloxacin and I am using moxifloxacin to hydrate the sideboards. Yes, in cases with posterior capsular rents, we can use moxifloxacin to hydrate the wounds. I repeat, if piscirent occurs, we can use moxifloxacin to hydrate the wounds, side ports as well as the main wound. I usually do not hydrate the main wound. It is fashioned in such a way that it remains closed doesn't leak. And this is formation of anterior chamber. And now I check the wounds, whether there is any leakage from any site or not. There is no leakage and I conclude the case. Thank you very much for your attention. Hope this video will give you a lot of tips to manage posterior capsular rents. I thank my friend Dr. Ramakrishna Tadanki to tell us repeatedly that we should do vitrectomy first and then aspirate the cortical lens matter. Thank you once again for your attention.